God risen. Well, good morning. Good morning, everyone, and uh, thanks for coming out, and thanks for sharing this uh, this time with us. Um, we're here today because uh, we have a love of history, and we have a great respect for those who came before us. And I can remember, as a little boy, being told by my grandmother, who was a Leeds, so I got uh, plenty of family history handed down to me, being a Risley and the Leeds, I got it both ways, and telling me about this wonderful monument here that the DAR put up many years ago, and the history, and, and so on and so forth. But we're here today, too, to look back in time to see how life was about, what was it about, and what happened here in the, the only revolutionary war, skirmish, whatever you want to call it, in Atlanta County. It all started back March 8, 1778, when Lord George, Lord, yeah, Lord George Germain, British Secretary of the State, <laughs> the colonies sent to General Clinton an order. And basically he told General Clinton to take as many boats and men that you shall need and clean up the pirates that were pirating the British ships from this area on up to Nova Scotia. Take as many as you need to rid the area of the rebel pirates. Now, we were pirates. They were called privateers. Privateers were an accepted part of naval warfare from the 16th and 19th centuries, and where they were authorized by all significant naval powers in the world. The cost of commissioning privateers were borne by investors in the colonies. Also, in this case, the state of New Jersey. And the revenues were divided by individuals, investors, and the colonies. We raised heck with the British shipping all along the coast. We took their supplies. And in 1777, in September, to show you how involved this, this state was, the New Jersey General Assembly voted to reimburse Colon uh, Colonel Elijah Clark and Major Westcote for the building of the fort at Chestnut Neck. British ships were brought in here and landed in Chestnut Neck, and their cargoes were transported first to warehouses at Chestnut Neck, or further up the river to a larger community called the Forks. Then the captured goods would make their way to Philadelphia by a wagon to be sold. Almost 30 ships and their cargoes were sold at the Forks in Chestnut Neck in August of 1778. In September the following month, another six ships were sold. So as you can see, we really ticked the British off. In New York, British General Clinton decided to organize an expedition to wipe out the pri privateering center and to destroy the ironworks at Batstow. The expedition would become known to the British as the Egg Harbor Expedition. Now in September, of that same year, September 29th, 1778, we're leading up to the events that happened here. New Jersey's colonial governor Livingston became aware of the plans that the British fleet were on the move. They dispatched riders to warn the residents of the coastal communities and inform General Washington of the expected fleet movements. Major General Benedict Arnold, that's when he was still on our side, received notice of the impending attack and ordered Colonel Proctor's Pennsylvania Regiment to the Little Egg Harbor area. Because of the warnings at Chestnut Neck, ships were put to sea and warehouses were emptied and many residents removed themselves and their household belongings. Now the British left the New York Harbor and due to a storm and heavy seas, it took them, which was 16 ships, four and a half days from New York to arrive here on October 6th. So there must have been pretty rough seas. When the British ships arrived here around noon, local loyalists joined the British to inform them about the militia at Chestnut Neck. So as you know, there were folks here and all over this country that were still loyal to the Crown. 
Around 4 p.m., the militia was routed by the bayonet-wielding British regulars. There was not much they could do to defend the town. The British had cannons and many men. The defenders numbered, numbered less than 20 with no cannons whatsoever. The British Commander Collins came here and found 10 vessels at Chestnut Neck and ordered the town and all the vessels to be burned. It took all night until noon the next day. Since the British lost the element of surprise, and this is the, the most important part of the story, I believe, they decided not to proceed to the Forks and Batstow as they were warned by local loyalists that Proctor's regiment with artillery were on their way. However, the great loss of life did not occur here. It occurred further up the road in Tuckerton, when on October 15th, the British Colonel Ferguson, who also patented the famous Ferguson rifle, intact an encampment of Count Pulaski's legion in Tuckerton. The lone sentry was killed, overpowered, and sleeping soldiers were awakened and killed. Reports of 30 to 50 soldiers were killed, with only five left alive. The British had a tough time navigating these waters. Very tough time. They were frustrated because of the marshes and the sandbars. The British Commander Collins had many problems with this. Many boats of his fleet were stuck. He had 16 of them in total. In fact, one was stuck so badly, the newly commissioned HMS Zebra could not be dislodged. It had to be blown up. The British then went back to New York, and their Little Egg Harbor expedition ended in New York Har Harbor on October 23rd, 1778. So as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, the, the Battle of Chestnut Neck and the involvement of our locals here was extremely important to our cause of freedom, of our separation from England. Privateering was done all along this coast. And race came, quite frankly, and I can use some stronger language, <laughs> with, the, with the British shipping we were able to disrupt their supplies and hence bring to a close a revolutionary war. I would urge you to uh, take a look at this book that I have here. It's called A Nest of Rebel Pirates, written by our good friend Franklin Kemp, and many of us know Franklin, who wrote this book. It has a lot of detail in it, and quite frankly, you could go on for hours about all the events and what transpired here in Atlantic County. So with that, I want to thank you all for, for coming and joining with us to reflect back on our county's rich heritage. Thank you.